It started off a harmless vice. A feeling I enjoyed when I heard of the misfortune of others. Later, I learned that it is a common, widespread emotion. Well, widespread enough that the Germans came up with a name for it. I lead a blameless life otherwise. I do not drink in excess. I do not smoke or partake of any other drugs other than coffee, which I drink two cups of every morning so I may fulfill my work duties efficiently. I am absolutely not abusive to my long-term partner. I pay taxes and I enjoy, at least I thought, all the usual pleasures expected for someone in <laughs> my station in life. But soon enough I realized this feeling, my vice, it gave me a deep visceral thrill unlike anything else. Watching the new episode of our favorite Netflix show just paled in comparison. I could feel it, a wave of deep joy rising through my veins as someone started going on about the uh, divorce, death of their granny, a cancer diagnosis, or something as trivial as their son dropping out of school. The more the upset, the deeper the joy. A moistness blossoms between my legs unlike anything I have ever felt in my wildest adventures, which are pretty tame, I know. I lean forward, barely able to compose my features in the suitable arrangement of concern warranted for these exchanges. Yes, tell me more. Fortunately, there is hardly a shortness of misery and misfortune, and I am able to get my fix fairly regularly. Indeed, I have a reputation for being a good listener, for kindness and compassion. Colleagues, neighbors, friends, and relatives know I am always there for them, ready, even eager, to listen to their trials. One colleague locked in a year-long feud of a construction company who destroyed their house gave me a regular update. Another spared me no detail of their ghastly divorce dragging through family court. And aside, do judges actually behave like that? My God, I have no idea until Lindsay opened up to me about it. I lapped up every instant of mistreatment of Alex's father at the nursing home, and when the young son of a neighbor fell to his untimely death from their balcony, my body and mind were transported to a state of indescribable ecstasy. Now, that last event, now that left me wanting more. Ah, yes, the downfall of every addictive vice. More, more, more. It is no longer enough to be a passive recipient of other people's suffering. It is not enough to hear about disasters through the news. That just leaves me cold and dry. I thirst for the immediate spectacle of human distress. The quivering voice, the agonized face. And so, I have begun <clears throat> facilitating misery, using my local knowledge to create yet more suffering. Darlene's husband cheating? Easy! Paul lost his job? Child's play! But I still crave more. Tonight, I am planning a little 
hit and run for a neighbor's daughter, quite a stellar student, too, as she returns from basketball practice. That should fix me for another ten days, at least.